All right, hello and welcome to a lecture on Boolean algebra. This is going to look very, very familiar. It's pretty much logic part two, so that's pretty nice. It's just a review of a lot of stuff just with a new hat, new clothing. So yeah, Boolean algebra, it is just a bunch of rules and operations for working with zero and one. All right, and zero and one sounds very familiar, doesn't it? That's just the same as true and false. So, zero, as you might have expected, uh, is equivalent to false, just like in C++ when you print a bool by default, uh, and then one is equivalent to true, and uh, you know every rule that I'm about to teach you. Um, multiplication, if you multiply zero and ones, that's all you get in Boolean algebra land. Uh, multiplication is and, isn't it? Because if you multiply one times zero, you get zero. Like the zero dominates the and, just like how true anded with false is equal to false. So you know a lot. Uh, addition is or, if you just keep track of like one plus one is still one. Uh, so like one plus zero, for sure that's one, right? That's that's what or means. One plus one, you just define that to be one as well, because one is like the highest you can go to, which is interesting. Uh, and then there's a complement idea, similar to set theory, that's your negation, okay? That's your negation. So uh, like the complement of zero that we define as one. And so that's Boolean algebra. It's just one is true, zero is false, Multiplication is and, addition is or, complement is negation. It's everything we know and love with the same rules exactly. Uh, we do have some new terms because it's used a bit differently in different places. So we say that a literal is a Boolean var variable, like an X or a Y or something like that, or it's complement. All right, so it's something, uh, it's like a, a thing, a variable, or a variable negated. All right, and then we say that a min term is a product of literals, so it's an and. It's a, it's a big and. It's an and of variables or their negated forms. All right, so that's a min term, that's a min term, that's a min term. No plus anywhere in sight, and no negation over a lot of stuff, just negation over literals, right? Only literals are the things that could possibly be negated, just variables. So that's what those mean. We'll get back to that later, uh, but like that is what it means to be a min term, okay? So like, for example, this would be a min term, x times y times z bar times x bar times another z maybe. Okay, something like that. So that's Boolean algebra land. And then here's a fun meme about all of that. Uh, so enjoy that and we'll go on to the next slide. So Boolean algebra is all about making circuits, circuits that describe logical formulas. So, uh, and for that reason, you can take Boolean algebra, aka your logical operations, and make them into physical hardware because circuitry that does this kind of stuff exists inside of a computer. They're called logic gates. All right, so a logic gate performs a single operation, a Boolean operation on an input. So there is like the idea of an OR gate, we say. So it doesn't look like that. I'll, I'll show you what it really looks like in just a second, but you can imagine it's a box with the OR on it. Uh, and like it takes in a one and a zero as input wires and it outputs a one because that's their or, yeah? So there's plenty of cool little circuit simulators on the internet that you can look into, uh, but I'm gonna show you it in drawing form. So here, here's the different kinds of circuits that you can make, all right? They're made up of these logic gates. Let me teach you the different logic gates, okay? So uh, these are the main ones you're gonna see uh, I guess this one's a bit outdated at this point, isn't it? So uh, there are some cooler ones, but like these are the ones I want you to care about for this class and for most of your future classes. So this is what they look like. This is called the AND gate. It looks like a little bullet from Super Mario coming at you. And it performs the AND operation on the two numbers. So it takes the X and the Y and it gives back their AND, which of course in Boolean algebra we write that as multiplication. So that's why you see X next to Y like that. And then the OR gate looks like this. It's a little bit curvier, a little bit pointier at the ends. So this produces the OR of two, uh, two Boolean values. So you bring in the XY wires and it feeds out in the output their sum, which is their OR, right? Because that's what Boolean algebra is all about. And this is called a NOT gate or an inverter. NOT gate as well, I'll say. 
And so it takes in uh, a variable x and it spits out its negation. Remember that the complement just means negation, not x is going to get spat back out to you. Uh, and I want you to think of the negation happening at the dot because future gates that I'm going to teach you have that in common. So think of the negation happening at the dot right there. But that's, that's pretty much the setup. And so uh, this is honestly very simple given what we know, isn't it? So just remember what the gates look like and let me, let me show you some ideas. So let's take this example and let's figure out what the output of this gate will be when x is 1, y is 0, and z is 1. So x is 1, y is 0, z is 1. Remember which gates are doing what. Oops. We'll figure them out together. And off we go. So this is the OR gate. This is the AND gate. AND gate. These are NOT gates. Inverters. Inverters. Uh, so, OK, what's happening? Coming out of here, we have x and y, right? x and y ORed together. So x and y ORed together come out of this wire. x ORed with y come out of there. Uh, and then, so that's, uh, let's see, that's a 1, right? Because it's 1 ORed with 0. The output's a 1. Right, let's let's just do the, the numbers first. So one ORD with zero, true ORD with false, true, right? Uh, so there's a one coming out of there, and all right. Let's also I guess this at the same time we can compute the formula that's going on here. So yeah, like this this was x ORD with y, and we knew that x was one and y was zero. So output on this wire is one, and then we can do similar things like coming out of this wire. This means it's hopping over and it's not touching the y. It's kind of cute. Uh, it's feeding into an inverter or not gate, so this is x negated. This is not x, right? Not x, which is negation of one, complement of one. That's zero. All right, and then same thing with z. Z is being negated here, so we have not z come out of here, which is also zero, isn't it? Uh, let's see. So that's not z. We got that, and uh, let's see what else. What else? Then. We're feeding into the final AND. Oh, sorry. These first two things are being ANDed together. So it's computing the AND of not x and not z. Yeah. So not x ANDed with not z. And that's 0 AND with 0. Of course, that's 0. That's, that's perfect. Uh, and then what else we got? We have ANDing, finally, the two last things. ANDing this 1 with this 0. ANDing this x or y with uh, not x and not z. Okay, so it's doing the x or y anded with not x and not z, and its output, of course, is zero because one side is false. So that's the final output there. So the output's zero, that's the answer. And what it's doing is it's, it's outputting this formula. It's doing x ORD with y anded with not x and not z, and I can get rid of those parentheses if there's just a bunch of ands. Not x and not, uh, not z. So that's pretty much what's going on there. And remembering back our Boolean algebra rules, it's, it looks a bit different. We can use those th symbols instead. Uh, so let's give that a try. So this is going to be equivalent to x plus y, yeah? Multiplied by not x is x bar multiplied by z bar. Okay, same idea though, Boolean algebra. And so really this is computing, at the end of the day, it's computing uh, x, x and y are 1 and 0, so it's doing like 1 plus 0 times what's x bar? That's uh, 1 bar times uh, 1 bar again, right? That's z bar. Uh, that's equal to 1 times 0 times 0, which is equal to 0. OK, so that's another way to come up with that answer. So uh, now you know. Your turn. So give this a try. See if you can come up with a circuit diagram for this expression, x times y bar plus z times all this w plus z, all that together barred, all that together complement. OK, so here are the ideas, the symbols. Here are the gates, and now you try. And then once you have it, get that exp 
figure out like what happens when, when uh, x and y are both 1 and w and z are both 0. What's the output? See if you can figure that out. All right, so uh, we have three, four variables involved, x, y, z, and w. So just like this example, we're going to need wires coming in with those names. So let's have that. Uh, and so I want to take x with y bar, and so I need to negate y. I'll use the not gate, and I'll take that and I'll and it with x. I'll take that and I'll and it with x. Boop. And. Perfect. And so there's that. And now coming out of here is x, y bar. See that? And then same kind of stuff down here. So I want to do w plus z bar, because then I need to multiply it by z. Yeah. So I need w plus z first so that I can negate it. So let's take that. Uh, I guess I could do it in any order. The order doesn't matter for or, but let's, like, let's, let's mix up these z's and w's here. I think that would be cleaner. The order doesn't really matter. w and z. Uh, and so let's or those together. Let's take, take a w, take a z. And I will or them together. There they go. And so coming out of here is w plus z. And then I want to complement that. I want to negate it. OK? So I'm going to take that, negate it. And uh, coming out of there now is w plus z complement. See that? All that complemented. And then I want to take that and multiply it by z. So that's and, anding it with z on either side. It could go on either side, the and. And so I want to like I want an and gate. I want to feed this into an and gate with that, and then also z itself. And so you can like you can hook in a new y. Like people like to put a circle like like this, like bring in z somewhere else, copy it. And so coming out of here now is z times the the w plus z. I guess the cool kids are not using the multiplication symbol. They're just putting it right next to the stuff. Uh, and then so now I have this, and I have this, and I want to add them, so or them. So I use an or gate finally to get all this up in there and happy. So that will be what I want just like that. So that's my x, y bar plus my z times w plus z complemented. So that. That's what I needed. So that's the complicated circuit. So if you wanted to build this, uh, now you could, if you had all those pieces and those wires. And now let's evaluate it when x and y are 1 and w and z are 0. So I've got uh, 1 times y bar, which is 1 bar, plus z is 0, 0 times w plus z complemented is 0 plus 0 complemented, right? That's the that's the expression we, we need to compute. And so that is. 1 times 0, so 1 anded with 0, uh, it's always 0, right? False. F true anded with false is false. And then we're adding that to 0 anded with the negation of 0 ord with 0, which is 1. So that's 0 anded with, that was 0 bar, right? Which is 0 plus 0 times 1, which is still. 0 plus 0, right? So it's it's false or with false at the end of the day. That's the last operation. And that will be that. So that's the idea. That is the output. And uh, actually, the order of operations for math kind of takes over here. You know that multiplication and binds tighter than addition or. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and now you can understand so many new memes. So pat yourself on the back. Um, and yeah. Let's keep on trucking. So remember I said that word minterm and literal? This is where this applies. So this new concept is where this applies. So let's talk about that. Uh, remember, literal is variable or negated variable, and a minterm is a product of literals. So where am I here? Let's talk about disjunctive normal form and conjunctive normal form. So disjunctive normal form, DNF for short, is a sum of products of literals. All right. So it looks like this. You got a bunch of products of literals, so a bunch of min terms, x times y bar times z, 
and maybe have like just w by itself that's technically a literal uh, that's a sum of product of literals just one thing and then you have like p and uh, q bar so those are a bunch of uh, min terms a bunch of some a bunch of products of literals and disjunctive normal form is when you have those and you sum them okay so that's disjunctive normal form that's equivalent to of course uh, in logic land, that's like a bunch of, it's an or of ands. <laughs> yeah, so this is anding x and not y and z, and then you're oring that with w, and then you're oring that with p anded with not q. Yeah, so that's what that looks like in logic. So it's just a, it's an and of ors, or sorry, an or of ands, excuse me, that's DNF. Uh, so the outermost operation is called disjunction. That's why we say DNF, J disjunctive normal form. Disjunction means or, that's the pretentious way of saying or. That's the outermost operation. Conjunctive normal form is the opposite, CNF. It's a product of sums of literals. So you got a bunch of sums of literals. You got a bunch of, uh, essentially, let's see, what's the way to say this? You got a bunch of, like, got a bunch of sums, P plus Q, uh, X plus Y bar, stuff like that, okay? You got Z plus W. You got all those, and you take them, and you multiply them together. All right, so it's a, it looks like this. It's a product of sums of literals. That's how that works. Okay, and so uh, that's conjunctive normal form. And so in equivalent logic, that would be, it's, it's an and of ors. <laughs> I think that's how I want to say it. So that's like P ORed with Q. This is X ORed with not Y. This is Z ORed with W. And you're anding those together. So the AND is the outermost thing. That's a conjunction. Okay? That's CNF. That's what that means. So the reason we like the idea of DNF and CNF is that these kind of look normal to us as humans. Like this is, this is nice. Like I have my variables. I have those. I can make things happen. Okay? So that's, that's all that, and it's happy. And uh, whereas, look at a formula like this, like x times y plus, like, I don't know, z, z times w, let's do plus p, all of that barred, and then let's multiply all that times uh, a q, maybe. And then just for good measure, let's Let's con let's uh, let's complement negate all of that. So this looks disgusting, right? This is disgusting. This is way too complicated, especially that part. Too complicated. And so the idea is that we want to make uh, a nice form. We want to convert all this into a nice form that looks like one of these because that's easier to think about. That's the idea. And like reason about and like find the values for like find if it's true or false and build circuits for, et cetera, et cetera. So we like getting our formulas into DNF or CNF, okay? So with that in mind, uh, let, let me just get you some practice using the Boolean algebra, algebra land. So you know how to take, this is like a truth table again, right? Just with ones and zeros this time. Please compute which logical formula computes this, like what, it, what should F be? What's this function? What is it doing? What is this? What's the logical formula, the Boolean expression that computes this, given x and y? Uh, and then, like this is your question mark from before, from our logic slides. See so if you can figure out that. And then you have a formula, write it in Boolean logic, uh, and then or Boolean algebra, and then also make a circuit out of it, please. So give that a try. While I move my cat to a more safe place, he's underneath my computer by the wires right now. You have a very nice place and he's not sitting on his on the nice pillow I got for him sadly so okay cat is nowhere near electricity and let us continue so okay this is like this is true and false right or this is false false somehow it's it's a one there you remember how to get the one there that's like all right when in, when x is false not x is true and not y is true so when x is false and y is false I want a one right there that, that gives you the one and then you or that with the thing that gives you one right here. That's when x is false and y, uh, sorry, when x is true, excuse me. When x is true and y is false. x is true and y is false. And so that's equivalent to in Boolean algebra. It's x bar and y bar multiplied. Uh, and then you add that to uh, 
x and y bar. Okay, so with that, let's draw the circuitry for that. So we got an x and a y. Those are our two variables, so we need wires for them. And we want to take uh, not x and y and and them. So I need uh, I need not x. That gives me not x, and I need not y as well. So actually, I'm always using not y, so that's perfect. Uh, let's negate y here, and then let's and them together for this side. So do you see if I and these, boop, boop, that will give me the x bar times y bar. And then I also need separately x times y bar, x anded with not y. So let's just take normal x. All right, let's just take normal x, let's hook into here, take a copy of x, hop over this little line there, uh, take that, and then uh, we want to uh, and that with not y. So we're going to take take the y, or sorry, the take the not y and put it right there, something like that. Okay, and so that's going to give us x times y bar, and then I want to or them together, so or or add them. So that's the or gate, and so it looks like this. And so those are both of my pieces, and that's going to make the circuit for what I want. All right, so that's x x bar times y bar plus um, x times y bar and that's exactly gonna compute ex exactly that kind of stuff okay so that's the idea I hope that makes enough sense uh, so let's keep on trucking learning some things so you already know all this by the way uh, or maybe I should I, I want to remember to like be like this is these were the two pieces that we found the formulas for before I forget there now it's all written on and happy. So okay, you already uh, you already know all this. These are the laws of Boolean algebra. They're just the same as the laws of logic, right? You have uh, you have your associative law for and and or. They look the same, right? Exactly the same, just new symbols, really. That's all. Distributive laws, etc., etc. Domination laws is double complement law rather than double negation law. This is what De Morgan's looks like with complements with little hats on things. Uh, it's all the same. There's nothing new, different, nothing new. So uh, with that in mind, just with the syntax looking a bit different, show that this is equivalent to this. And name each rule. So here, here are the laws again. Here are the rules uh, and their names. And you give this a try. So starting with x plus x bar y, all that complemented. we got to get some stuff, all right? So let's try to push the negation inward. That's what I would do. Let's push the negation inward. We're going to use a De Morgan's rule, right? De Morgan's rule to get rid of that that outer negation over the the plus. So that gives us we got you just negate both sides, right? You have x and x bar y, and you negate both of them. And then instead of adding, we're going to multiply them. So instead of oring, we're going to and. That's De Morgan's law in Boolean algebra. So that's De Morgan gives me that. And then let's also push this negation inwards with another De Morgan. So that's, we still have the x bar times all this. And now, what is this? It's another De Morgan. It's this side and this side negated. So x bar and y bar, sorry, x bar bar and y bar. And then you or them instead of anding. So that's another De Morgan. So remember that this just means not. Uh, this is double negation which is called double complement now. Uh, and so we can get rid of that x bar times, we got just a normal x plus y bar. That's a double complement law. Double complement. Boop. Uh, and then, let's see. It would be nice if we could, like we, we need to get rid of, like we need to show it's equal to this. We need to get rid of the, ant, the or, sorry, get rid of the plus somehow. And so the easiest way to see that is to like distribute over the and. I think that would make the most sense to me. So we can get things by themselves and one might cancel. Uh, so that we're going to use a distributive law. Uh, I think it's going to be, we got this kind of one. We're going to have an and distributing. So we're going to take that x bar and give it to both of these. So x bar times x plus x bar times y bar. That's distributive law. And then we got, uh, what next, what next? 
I would like to get rid of these, right? X bar times X, anything multiplied by its complement is equal to zero. That's the complement law. It's like a domination law or something, and I forget. Actually, that might be the wrong word. Maybe it is the domination law from logic. No, sorry. We're about to get the domination law eventually, but no, it's just a complement law. So, okay. So we need to get this looking like, if you wanted to be very pedantic about it, the, the thing bar needs to be on the right side. So let's, uh, let's do that using, let's get it there, using the commutative law of multiplication of and. So this, this it becomes x times x bar, because we can use commutativity. And I still have that plus x bar times y bar. That's commutativity law, commutative law. And then uh, this finally becomes zero with this uh, complement law. So zero plus x bar times y bar. That's the complement law. And now anything ordered with zero is still the other thing. And so where is that? That's the identity law. We'd like to do that. And if you wanted to spell it out perfectly, the, the zero needs to be on the right side. So we have to use commutativity again. So x bar times y bar plus zero. That's commutativity. One more time. And then now we can use this rule. We can use the, uh, the identity law to get rid of the zero. So that's just x bar times y bar. That's the identity law. All right, so is that what you got? Very similar. It's, it's just logic all over again. It really is just written a little bit differently. So that's that one. Uh, and so for this one, here's another input-output table. Uh, is this the same one I gave you before? Do, no, a little bit different. So see where the ones are this time. Uh, for this one, give a Boolean expression that is a sum of min terms. What does that mean? A sum of min terms. Ooh. It's uh, a sum of products of literals. Products of literals means min terms. It's talking about DNF right now. So give me an or of ands, essentially. This is saying, I want DNF. So give a DNF formula for the following. OK? So give that a try. So here are the two pieces, right? And so if you think about it, it's this is a one when x is false and y is false, so x bar and y bar. And then we are going to or that with this other side that makes it a one. And that's going to be when x is true and y is true, x times y. Uh, and so it's both of those, just like that. And do you see how this is already a sum of min terms? Just the method that I showed you calculates a DNF form, which is pretty nice. And this, by the way, of course, is equivalent to your biconditional from logic. That's the same. It's like when when are they uh, when are they the same as each other? Which is the I guess the negation of exclusive or something like that. So cool. Now we know. Uh, and that's that. One more question for the day. So use the laws this time. Use the laws of Boolean algebra to get somewhere that we like. So convert this Boolean expression to DNF, disjunctive normal form, so it looks like a sum of min terms, just like this. So convert this to DNF, please, and name every law that you use. All right, first of all, be very, very careful about the bars, because it's hard to see sometimes. Notice that this is uh, this is x times y barred all that, and it's not, it is not x bar times y bar, completely different. Let's do the times first, then negate, okay? That's what it looks like. So that's that. So remember that the DNF means it's a, it's an or of ands, it's a plus of times is, then. that's the idea. So starting here, see if you can convert it to DNF form, please, disjunctive normal form. Get your x times y bar, and then multiply all that by x plus y, all that barred. See, another another thing on top, just like that. All right, so give that a try and uh, use your laws. All right, so we need 
to get this this plus at the outside. So we're gonna need to like distribute this over eventually. But right now, this 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 complement is stopping us. So let's use uh, De Morgan's law to distribute this complement. Let's actually use De Morgan's a few times. Let's do it on this one too. Maybe let's do it on this one first. So we got uh, this becomes x bar plus y bar, right? On this, this turns into that from De Morgan's, and then we still have the x plus y bar over here on the right. So that was one De Morgan. Let's do it again. Okay, we'll, we'll do that one more time. We've got uh, so this is all that bar. So let's convert this now. We still have the x bar plus y bar on the left. And so this becomes, uh, now it's x bar times y bar. OK, so there's that one. And that's another De Morgan. Cool. Uh, so wouldn't it be nice? We want this, uh, this plus on the outside. So what we'll do is we'll take this entire thing take this entire piece and we'll distribute it. We'll distribute it this way. See that? Distribute it onto both of those and then the plus becomes the outer thing. That's going to be the that's going to be the trick to use distributivity. I guess the thing that you want to distribute over uh, needs to be on the left, so we'll use commutativity first just if we want to be very very precise about the deal. Let's get this over on the left side of the of the outermost multiplication. So x bar times y bar on the left now x bar plus y bar. So that was commutativity. And then uh, now we can use distributivity. We're going to take this and give it to both of them. OK. So we got x bar times y bar. Give that to the x bar. <laughs> Multiply that because this is a multiplication, right? Give that to the x bar. And then we're also going to give the x bar times y bar to the y bar. So that's distributive law. And then, what next, what next? Uh, technically, this is a plus of times is. This is a sum of min terms. So we could, we could stop here if we wanted to. We could stop here. It's technically the answer by now. We could stop here. But I think we can make this a little bit more simplified, use fewer circuitry pieces. So let's attempt to keep going. So this is a valid answer. If I just wanted to DF, DNF, you could have stopped here. But uh, what else could we do? Uh, see how these like multiply a y bar by a y bar, an x bar by an x bar. That's like that's saying it too many times, right? Again, that's a little redundant. And so if you have two things together like that, x times x or x plus x, it's just the x. There's no need to say it twice. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get these x bars next to each other, and the y bars are already next to each other. Uh, so we'll use the commutative law of multiplication to get the x bars next to each other. x bar times x bar times y bar plus x bar still times y bar times y bar. So it's like y bar squared. So that was the commutative law. And then. Uh, sorry, I can't can't write very nicely today. Uh, and then we're going to get rid of both of these. We're going to use the, I guess, what's it called? It was the item potent law. That's cool. That's a very nice Latin term. That just becomes 1x bar times y bar plus x bar times 1y bar. So that was the item potent law. So this is DNF still. And now notice you have two of these added together to each other. Again, item potent law. It's just one big thing added to itself. It's still just that one thing. There's no need to say it twice. So this just becomes x bar times y bar by another application of the item potent law. OK? And so this is technically still DNF. It's a sum of min terms. It's just one min term summed with nothing else. So that would be like the best answer for if you want to save money on on the number of logic gates that you use, you do that one. So yeah, that's a that's our first taste of Boolean algebra. That's where I want to stop today. Uh, but uh, we'll pick this up next time and we'll do some more.